until last month, dot coms were the hottest addresses to have. As many as 90,000 Indian dot com startups were set up in the last one year alone. But on the 14th of April, shock waves ripped through technology stocks on the Nasdaq, driving it down 9.67 percent. The Bombay Stock Exchange followed suit. Many believed that the new economy had heard its death knell. Nearly a month after the crash and the verdict is that it happened for the general good of all. It is now believed that there will be a more realistic valuation of the dot-com industry as a whole. But has the crash dampened the spirit of startups in India? We try and get some answers. Merely two days after Nasdaq's nosedive, on April 16, 2000, the first page of a national daily launched India.com, an India-specific infotainment portal. It was in a way proof that dot-coms never say die. Sunil Lala, CEO India.com, feels that the net favours the strong and brave. We were the first portal when we had our under construction site that we had revenue come in. Coming to the future then, I think the future is big, it's bright. I could certainly see one where India.com will build for leadership. A positive sentiment echoed in part by Devang Mehta, the chairman of NASCOM, the association of software companies of India. He feels that the crash was opportune for the nascent Indian dot-com economy. We are learning from the international mistakes in dot-com, uh, doing good checks, getting more realistic and at the same time preparing our strategies for the future. Before the crash, venture capitalists pulled together more than 300 crore rupees as funding for dot-com startups in the last year. Despite the crash, the next one year will see even more money pouring in. Venture capitalists estimate that internet project funding is expected to touch 2,000 crore this year, up 400% from last year, and will double to 4,000 crores in 2001. But what is going to change is the kind of ideas that will be funded in the future. Renuka Ramnath, GMICICI, says that they are looking at newer business models. The perceptible change uh, right now is that people believe that the new world is real, it's going to exist and it is going to have huge potential. But it has got to be combined with the traditional strengths of old world brick and mortar business. Other venture capitalists like Ashish Dhawan of Chrysalis agree. Having put together a kitty of $65 million focused on internet and IT companies, he adds that revenue models should change. Advertising is a small market in India. It's a $2 billion opportunity. Even if 5% were to go online in the next three years, which I think is potentially possible, uh, that's a $100 million opportunity. That's small in the context of you know, the other services that can be uh, transported through the internet. A point that Puneet Dalmia, CEO of JobsAhead.com, a career placement site set up in June 1999, kept in mind before he went to seek capital. We wanted to build a business which is not just dependent on the advertising revenue stream. So uh, when we were doing our market scan, we saw this space which, uh, which we thought was very interesting because uh, customers pay for this service in the offline world and uh, there is no reason why they will not pay for the service in the online world. But even with a strong revenue model, startups cannot be sure of success. Leading industry sources say that 9 out of 10 startups could fail or be merged with others. The crisis, they say, will be particularly severe for horizontal portals, those sites which offer general news and entertainment, as opposed to vertical portals, those sites devoted to specific subjects. Many of the horizontal portals which stand alone will not be able to survive or not create enough revenue models would either uh, merge with each other you know, and form a new company or merge with an existing vertical portal. Uh, very few horizontal portal will be able to survive this marketplace. I think some partnerships with existing brick and mortar players make a lot of sense in, the, in that business, particularly the ones that are smarter and already gravitating towards incorporating e-commerce and web enabling their businesses. But there will be a lot more B2B uh, in the next couple of years as well. So are the dot-com startups in the business for the long haul? Sunil Jain, business editor with the Indian Express, feels that dot-com startups 
have a future in India only if infrastructure is improved. Now the critical part there really is that if you have very small internet usage in the country, there's no, no matter how many dot coms you have, if you have a very limited number of people who actually use them, obviously the impact or the spread is going to be limited. For the moment, both venture capitalists and startups seem to be in agreement about the kind of models that will form the business of the future. Freely available capital and good ideas can together turn the dot com dream into reality. But this is only likely to happen if the infrastructure is upgraded with increasing PC ownership and freely available bandwidth.